All right. Um, welcome, everyone, to uh, our first town hall of the year. Uh, I'm so happy you could all join us again today. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, area agencies on aging. Um, and we are joined today by our special guest, Emily Kemp. Emily is a uh, community options specialist for Aging Ahead, uh, which is the area agency on aging here in St. Louis. Um, uh, so she'll have a presentation. After that, we will open it up for questions. Um, if you've joined us before for some of our past sessions, um, you have a couple options. Um, you can just use the raise hand feature and uh, just ask your question verbally and we'll try to call on you in the order you uh, raise your hand. Or um, if you want, you can type in uh, your question to that Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, and we'll try to uh, get to those uh, in order as well. Um, so um, without further ado, I think I'll, I'll turn it over to today's speaker. So um, Emily, go ahead, take it away. Well, hello. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I hope that um, I'm going to be presenting something that will be useful to everyone today. Um, just a bit about our agency. We, as you said, we do serve St. Louis, but um, I am going to try to give you some more information um, that'll allow you to connect to um, your local agency um, that essentially does what we do. Um, let me see if I can share my screen here. Uh, I'm pretty new to this Zoom thing as well. Um, so aging ahead, um, we are what's known as an area agency on aging. Um, and that means that we provide community supports for people living in our service area um, who are over the age of 60 or their caregivers. Um, about 50 years ago, uh, give or take, the Older Americans Act was um, uh, passed, signed into law, and the Older Americans Act essentially gives funding to uh, agencies such as Aging Ahead. Um, they provide uh, some oversight, but really they leave it open for interpretation. So your area agency on aging may implement these programs a bit differently from what from how we do. They also allow a great deal of freedom to create our own programs. Um, and so that's allowed us to share other ideas like our choice program, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, so uh, Older Americans Act in the early 70s creates this funding for area agencies on aging, of which Aging Ahead is one. Um, as you can see, there are 10 area agencies on aging in Missouri. Um, we serve just uh, four counties over on the eastern side of the state. Um, so there are several, and there will be one in your area as well. I'm not sure what area of the country you all are from. Um, so what we do, um, the funding that we get through the Older Americans Act, we have to provide some core services. Um, we provide nutrition. Many people know us for home delivered meals or meals on wheels. Um, so we do have volunteers that deliver those meals to seniors in our region. Um, we have support services, we have caregiver support in the form of uh, respite care, um, I'm sorry, durable medical equipment or minor home modification, um, and just supportive services. Uh, many of the things that we help seniors with might be things that we would refer to an outside agency. We have many community partners for that reason, simply because it can be somewhat difficult to, to house all those experts in one building. Um, uh, these are our phone numbers. If you are in the St. Louis region or you live in St. Charles, Jefferson, or Franklin County, um, these are the numbers for reaching us. So I'm a community options and services uh, specialist. And what that means is that I provide information and assistance 
That is one of the core functions of an area agency on aging, providing information and assistance to um, people that live in the service area, people calling us to just answer questions. Um, and I, I have to say for, for what it's worth, no question is, is too difficult. I'm gonna try to help people answer those questions, whether it's something we do or, or not. Um, and we get many calls from caregivers who live out of state, um, family members who might need help. And so they find us um, and reach out and I'm, I'm glad that they do. <clears throat> so our family caregiver support program, um, that is one of the most utilized programs um, that we have. And um, what it allows is for a caregiver who's full-time in the home to access some benefits. We offer respite care. So if you are a caregiver who lives in the home um, and doesn't work and is not a paid caregiver, we can offer respite care. So that's someone from a uh, from an agency we contract with, an in-home care agency. Um, so a caregiver can come out once a week for eight hours and just give that caregiver a break. That may also look like adult daycare. Um, the adult daycare portion of that um, would be two days a week that your loved one could go and have some socialization, participate in some activities, um, giving you that needed break to go out and take care of some things that, you know, maybe you haven't been able to take care of for yourself. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, one of the exclusions, um, if you have Medicaid services or VA services, uh, those would, they, you would not be able to participate simply because it's a, an additional federal funding source. Um, so we can't overlap on services that you're already eligible for. So in-home respite, um, and I apologize, this needs to be updated. Uh, it is eight hours per week now. Um, caregiver cannot work outside the home. We offer the adult daycare respite. Uh, the durable medical equipment, it, though it is a lifetime benefit, um, many of those things are uh, covered by insurance. Um, so that's something that we would have to explore with you. Um, but we can cover up to $500 for some type of equipment that you may need. Um, the uh, bed pads would be covered under that, uh, wheelchair, um, ramps, or things like that. Minor home modification would include ramps if they are affixed to the building. Um, so each of those is $500 over a lifetime for supporting the caregiver in the home. Um, we have so many folks who take care of um, someone who needs nutrition products or incontinence products. Um, so annually, we can do our supply bank, um, though it's just $110 each year. Uh, the person can order supplies up to that amount, or they can purchase them themselves, and we reimburse them for that amount. Um, so all that is under the umbrella of the Family Caregiver Support Program. Um, our providers, uh, again, um, Help at Home and Always Caring are the two providers we have right now. I believe NECAC may be in another county, but I'm not sure we're still working with them. Um, our programs change as our funding changes. Um, and uh, many times our community partners will change. Um, for the adult daycare, at least in St. Louis, we have uh, St. Elizabeth's. Um, anyone familiar with St. Louis Adult Day at the J is a very, very popular um, adult day center. Um, and they do have a wait list. So I believe they are on hold right now. Yeah, uh, this clearly needs to be updated. I do apologize. Um, so it is still two six hour days at adult daycare. Um, so if the person lives alone, um, let's see. If there's not a caregiver available, um, I believe we used to have funding for a single person to attend adult daycare. Um, that may be on hold now as well. 
Um, I did want to provide some further information, but does anyone have questions right now? Well, Francine asked, do you, do you know of any national services? Um, national services, no, but um, the Older Americans Act, um, that is what governs us and all um, area agencies on aging. Um, so the way that you could locate that is through the uh, the ACL, um, this website that I have pulled up. Um, you can enter a zip code here and locate your own. I also suggest calling them. Many of the calls that I get daily are from someone having reached out to Elder Care Locator. So uh, through Elder Care Locator, um, if you are okay online, um, you can enter a zip code and find the, the local area agency on aging. Um, as I said, many people call them and they'll get transferred to us. Um, so this is uh, how to locate your local area agency on aging and other support services that might be available. Um, let's see. Our website is just agingahead.org. Um, if you are in St. Louis, St. Charles, Jefferson, or Franklin County, um, you can explore some of the things we have to offer. Um, we have senior centers uh, available around the region where you can go and have congregate meals. Um, they do activities at the senior centers and they have their lunch menus available online as well. Um, but how each area agency on agent, area agency on aging, how many times have I said that, uh, how they administer these programs can look um, slightly different. So for example, the city of St. Louis, which is um, just a small section here, um, that is served actually by a different area agency on aging, um, and that is through the county government. Um, and so many of their services, though they do offer transportation, it looks different from what we offer for transportation. Um, they contract out uh, case management services. Um, so it can look slightly different. Um, those same core services are going to be there. Um, but just know it, it may look a little different or it may be different um, uh, companies or um, uh, different locations, uh, depending on uh, what area you live in. All right. Do, uh, do you mind if we take a question? I see someone with their hand raised. No, please. Yeah. Um, um, I see uh, Karen has a question. Karen, go ahead. Unmute. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, this is strictly for that state, am I correct? I mean, what you're talking about, uh, the agencies change from state to state. Correct. Um, and that's where the uh, elder care locator comes in. Um, the, the funding is through the Older Americans Act. Uh, so they set this funding aside for area agencies on aging to provide these core services, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't necessarily say how we have to do that. So your area agency on aging, though they will provide these services, it may look a, a bit different from what we do. So, you know, I'm providing some specifics on aging ahead, um, but there are area agencies on aging uh, where you are mm -hmm. in every community there are in the United States. Okay, because I, I the other thing was the five hundred dollars uh, for a lifetime for uh, medical equipment. Mm -hmm. um, but does Medicare also cover, like, say, you need an electric wheelchair? Um, wheelchairs are one of those um, special cases. Um, so we can purchase like a transport chair, but if you have a wheelchair, it has to go through your doctor and be through your insurance. Um, should something happen to that and insurance will not cover it, then of course we can. Um, but those are, those are circumstances, uh, individual to the person that we have to explore. So which insurance are you talking about? Medicare? Or are you talking about personal insurance? 
Uh, Medicare for sure. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I couldn't speak on, uh, you know, personal insurance, all those policies, I'm sure look vastly different. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, Medicare would need to be uh, attempted first. Um, and if that's not a possibility, then then we can do that. Um, mm -hmm. We did get uh, a family to uh, two wheelchairs. They were transport chairs for um, a wife who was the caregiver for her husband um, so that they could more easily transport him to appointments. So mm -hmm. um, the transport chair is a bit different. You can't um, self-propel uh, in those chairs. They have the smaller wheels. So accomplishes something similar, but um, you know, it's, it's an item that we could cover. Yeah, no, I'm talking about later, like, because uh, I had polio, um, I'm, I'm walking with a walker now, eventually I'm going to be in a wheelchair, um, I hope not, but I probably will, and I would need an electric wheelchair, a mobile wheelchair, not one that, you know, I'd have to be pull, pushing wheels all the time. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I do believe insurance will cover that, again, that has to go through your, your doctor, um, yeah. But yes, um, okay. your state should also have, um, if you have Medicare questions, I I can answer some questions, obviously, but um, there are experts on Medicare. Are you familiar with the state health insurance assistance program in your state? No, I haven't gone on any assistance yet. I don't, you know. Well, the, it's, uh, it's, again, something that's uh, mandated through the, the federal government. Um, so Missouri has, they call it MoShip. It used to be called Claim. Um, but these are volunteers that answer questions about Medicare, sometimes Medicaid as well. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, they, essentially, they are experts who are not going to try to sell you a policy that maybe you don't need, but they can just provide factual good information for you to make a decision on that. I feel like they might be able to field some of those questions that you have. Um, so if if you check and look up the state health insurance assistance program for your state, it should come up. Each state should have one. Okay. Health assistance program. Okay. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, someone had asked here, uh, does access to services depend on a maximum income? Uh, no, we we gather income information, um, but uh, but no, not for the purpose of uh, eligibility. Um, and essentially, our services are based on a self declared need. Mm -hmm. um, so many of our our folks, they might be their income may be too high for Medicaid, for example, or uh, you know SNAP benefits, uh, but they can't afford those. Um, those other services regardless, um, you know, because it's taking too much from their daily expenses. They still have to pay a mortgage. They still have to pay uh, insurance for food, for transportation. So, um, and that's where we come in. So we ask about income, but not as an eligibility question. Okay, great. Uh, someone asked what the link was for the elder care locator. I'm just, I'm going to throw that Oh, it's under answered questions there, but I'll throw it in the uh, chat as well. If people want that link. Okay. Am I still, uh, can you still hear me? Oh or yeah, sorry, I, yep. Should I unmute or? You can just <laughs> mute again, yeah. All right, there we go. Um. Here is the link. I'm throwing that into the chat. So if anyone needs that, or you can just, if you do a simple web search for elder care locator, it should come up as the first result and take you right there. Um, uh, like Emily said, there's usually uh, an area agency on aging will serve like a, a few counties or depending on how you know dense your area is. Um, so if you want to find your local one, just go to that website, put in, uh, I believe your zip code or address, and it'll, it'll it'll show you which one serves your area. And like she said, there's a ton of other great resources on there as well. The, um, um, oh, yep, sorry. Go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, there's a, a website for finding that uh, state health insurance assistance program. Uh, it's just shiphelp.org.
All right. Oops. Uh, let's see. Carla has her hand raised. Uh, go ahead, Carla. The um, $110 for nutritional supplies and incontinent supplies, is that amount only in Missouri where maybe your food is a little cheaper than in California? That That is our amount, um, yes. Uh, okay. So... Uh, I don't know. Even the other um, the other counties in Missouri may have a different amount, um, and so that would cover um, incontinence products. Or when I say nutrition products, that's referring to uh, like Boost or Insure. Um, so that like the nutrition shakes, um, we also do the home delivered meals uh, for nutrition as well. Not included in that. Okay, thank you. Welcome. All right. Um, anyone else have any other questions? Uh, Diane, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. I'm in Florida, but um, generally speaking, you mentioned that respite help, respite care for the caregiver. Uh, is an area that your agency can provide. Have you noticed in, um, you know, general uh, application of respite that the caregiver has to be, what if the caregiver has a part-time job? So that caregiver does work, but maybe just, you know, six, eight hours a week or something. Would that be reason to deny or not be um, eligible for respite care for the caregiver? Um, yes, um, the real uh, issue is not whether they are working, but whether that person needs oversight. So, uh, you know, if the person is able to leave the home and go to a job, mm -hmm. then there's not really reason for a caregiver to be there with them. Um, Got it with the, the person who needs the care. Um, I will say we have provided respite care to someone who's working from home. Um, yeah, in fact, that's what I was thinking of. It's, mm -hmm. It is a person that works part-time, but she does work from the home because she doesn't want to leave. Yeah, um, and that's definitely a possibility, at least here. I know that we've done that a couple of times. Um, so even though they may be working, that that's not what excludes them. It's the the need for oversight. Um, if they cannot be away. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Does anyone else have uh, any questions? Aaron, go ahead. I think you're on mute. Yeah, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, I um, uh, had polio 1955. I was three at the time, but uh, I only started to using crutches. Uh, cane, yeah, crutches in the last four to five years, and I find that uh, my right hand is now getting carpal tunnel syndrome, and I think it's because of the use of the crutches is what the uh, physical therapist told me. Any recommendation on uh, how to uh, help somebody who has who's now getting carpal tunnel syndrome? Of course, they're using crutches. Well, have you, well, I mean, I would I would advise you to discuss that with your physician and and see what they might recommend um, in order to treat that, and then possibly an alternative use to using those crutches, which might include you know using. Uh, a power chair, using a scooter more, or something like like that. But yeah, I think that's probably a, a conversation best best left to your uh, position. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.
Um, Karen, I saw your hand up. I don't know if that's from previously. No, or no, did you no. Have another question. Um, um, I'm gonna bring it down. Is it down? No, as as yeah, no, as as uh, Karen ha had her hand up. Sorry. Oh, I think she lowered it. That must have been from previously. All right. Um, any additional questions today? Emily, what would you say are, are probably your most used services? Transportation, transportation by far. Yeah. yeah. Um, transportation is, is a tough one. It's uh, It's very much needed here, but it's so expensive. I mean, it's just completely cost prohibitive if you're, if you're paying out of pocket for it. Um, yeah, that's by far the most popular um, resource that I give out uh, this time of year, a lot of tax help. Um, so um, kind of depends on the time of year, I suppose. We get a lot of calls for uh, utility assistance in the winter and the summer mm -hmm. and um help to winterize the home, which hopefully we have a program coming for that um, energy audits, but it's kind of on the, not on the back burner. It's just not, not here yet. So oh, I'm okay. excited for that. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a ton of calls for that. These old homes in St. Louis for sure. Mm -hmm, definitely. Uh, let's see. Carla has her hand up. Go ahead, Carla. The, the transportation that you're, talking about um are the vehicles that people are transported in and the drivers able to manage a power chair or help the person put a walker in the car that type of thing yes um we have recently expanded our transportation service um so we, we do an assessment when someone calls and um, try to see what service is going to be best for them. Um, if the person doesn't require any sort of mobility assistance, typically we can assign them with our, um, it's called on the go. That's the contractor that we utilize for people who don't require that. Um, and that's just Uber rides or Lyft rides that are arranged through this company and we pay for those. Um, if you do need uh, like wheelchair transportation or more assistance hands-on when traveling, um, we utilize a different company that has those specialized vans. I do know that they have a, they do have to check the weight capacity because even those vans, mm -hmm. um, some of those power chairs can be pretty heavy um, with those batteries. Um, so they do check that just to ensure that they can safely transport you. But yes, we have both options available. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. Uh, any additional questions? Yeah, uh, Patricia, if you're there, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Is that easy meal prep for independent elderly wheelchair user? I don't know if you wanted to raise your hand, if you wanted to add to that all right i think she's having some trouble with her audio uh um, all right oh go ahead i i mean uh, oh sorry. a suggestion for easy meal preparation um the home delivered meals we offer are frozen meals um so those are very easy if you can utilize a microwave um the only other suggestion I might have is uh, um, perhaps contacting an in-home service agency um, to see perhaps if you would be eligible for like a personal care or homemaker service. All right. Um, any other questions? All right, well, um, it's like we don't have any additional questions. Um, so I, you know, I think we might 
then wrap it up there. I want to thank uh, thank you again, Emily, for uh, sharing your time and knowledge with us today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, for our members, if you'd like to support PHI and, and programs like the one we're bringing you here today, uh, you can go to PHI's website, which is www.post-polio.org. Um, click on the donate button at the top of the screen. Um, and also keep an eye out in your uh, your email or on the website or on our Facebook page for information about future sessions. Um, as always, we will be uh, posting the session on the website, um, also on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Um, so if you're not already a subscriber to our social media accounts, uh, I would encourage you to give us a follow. Um, not only will you find um, all of our uh, Zoom webinars there, but also a ton of other informative content. Um, and so, um, including everything we've done in the past. So um, again, thanks everyone for joining us here today. I, I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you again, Emily, for uh, for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you all. <laughs>